My guest today is Robert Green. Robert, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm thanks doing for wonderful. having me on the show. Oh, thanks for being on my show. I, awesome. I understand you have a show of your own. I uh, am the host of the Visual Studio Toolbox show on Channel 9. Excellent. Uh, which I've been doing since around 2011. So, what's yeah. that? About seven years? Yeah, that's about how long I've been doing 260 or, so epi- or so episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that's not your day job. What's your day job? My day job is I'm a senior program manager in commercial software engineering, mm-hmm. um, which is the same group you're in. I am. I'm a senior uh, engineer of some kind. I've got the yep. title of and software I, engineer. <laughs> I focus on DevOps, and I also uh, spend some of the time working on what we call PM fundamentals. So what tools do we use to manage engagements, etc. You do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of stuff. What, should we talk, what do you want to talk about today? <laughs> we only have limited time here because we gotta actually have work to do later. I know. Let's, what should we talk about? Let's talk about DevOps. DevOps. Okay, good. Which is, you know. What is DevOps? So DevOps is, uh, it's people, process, I, I actually forget the full official thing a bunch we, of we call. Um, but it's basically best practices on how to get better at delivering software more quickly. Okay. So, and when I say get better at, it's all about your cadence. It's all about your delivery. So if you think about, you know, the old days, back when we'd, you'd ship software every year or every three years or yeah, something, Yeah, certainly right? Microsoft did every three right. years. Right, we did, and... and a lot of people delivering enterprise software will do the same thing, or even package software, right? You do a bunch of work, and then you stop, and then you test, and then you deliver. And oh. then you start taking requirements, you start taking bug request, you know, um, issues, and then you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then you do it again. Okay. And then you do it again. And, <clears throat> you know, if you think about it, the the downside to that is I give you the latest version of the software and you install it and you find a bug okay. right and you say well this is pretty cool but it would be nice if it could do this and we'll say, just wait for the next and I release. say you're right that is a great <laughs> idea you'll get that feature in a year and a half or you'll get that bug fix in six months right now fast forward to today how often do the apps on your phone update too often <laughs> Potentially too often. There, there's a, a pendulum, right? Um, I use the the internal version of Outlook, yeah, and I, like I get about four <laughs> updates a week. Right. And I look to see it. It says, oh, fixed an issue um, with syncing. And I may or may not have had that issue. Yeah, but it's kind of cool it. that it's fixed. That is and nice. then three days later, another issue is fixed, right? So it's about delivering more value to the to the end user, which is the customer, more quickly. Now, how do you do that? Yeah. The DevOps process, adopting these best practices, will make it easier for you to move into that mode. And then you get to decide how often. Right? DevOps is not about shipping software five times a day. Okay. It's not about shipping software once a week. It's about um, being able to ship new versions of the software at an accelerated cadence. Oh, okay. And then you get to decide what that is, right? In, in enterprise, uh, an enterprise software, particularly if it's a desktop app that has to be installed, I don't know that <clears throat> your users are going to want daily updates or twice weekly updates. Right. They'd probably <clears throat> be happy with updates every two or three weeks. Especially if the and, updates are uh, disruptive. Right. They're going to interrupt their workflow. And if you have to install a new version of the executable, <laughs> that is kind of disruptive. But yeah. maybe during the very busy season, um, they would want an update weekly and then yeah. the rest of the time monthly. You get to decide the cadence. Yeah. So DevOps is all about um, getting to the point where you can do that. So well, did, did DevOps not exist five, six, seven years ago no. when the companies were releasing th- you know, if you think about years, it, we just everything has always existed. <laughs> okay, because it's an right. idea. Right. But what, um, what, what changed the, in the industry? That it's Robert Green. I can't believe it's the real Robert Green. Oh, my <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> Jerry Nixon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so what has he changed? He desperately wants to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he is, unless you cut that. <laughs> it's him. It's him for the room. <laughs> um, I think what, is, what has changed is the recognition that 
Um, there are practices you should adopt, and then the tooling that helps you do it. So tooling is better. You know, Team Foundation Services (TFS), which yeah. existed for a while, and then the online version, which has gone through several naming iterations. Yeah. First, it was Visual Studio Online, then it was Visual Studio Team Services, and now it's been renamed to Azure DevOps Services. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but it's basically software you can use to set up your build process, your release process, get some testing in there, do some monitoring, all within a basically a, a suite of tools that you can use, and then all ideally sitting in Azure, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also third-party tools that you can integrate into the process. So some people use VSTS, some people use Jenkins. There's all kinds of third-party and open-source tools you can use. Um, and you can even mix and match if that's what you want. But mm -hmm. the whole idea is to, is to automate build. So, you know, we hear a lot about CICD pipelines, right? And CICD stands for? Continuous integration, continuous deployment. Mm -hmm. So a continuous integration pipeline basically says, when I check in code, have a server somewhere, build and build the, the software for me, and then run all the unit tests, and then tell me what happened, right? And if you think about that, <clears throat> why is this better? Well, first of all, your unit tests are running yep. automatically, and secondly, your unit tests are running across the entire software. So if I'm working on my piece, Hey, it works on my machine, must be good. And you work on your piece, works on my machine, must be good. But then it turns out that our two pieces don't work so well together, right? right? I can run all my unit tests. I'm not going to run your unit tests. That's your job. Right. You run your unit tests, you're like, I'm not going to run Robert's unit tests. Yeah, but maybe something <coughs> I did broke right. your code. So then when we check in, the whole thing builds. All of the unit tests are, are run. And if unit tests failed, then that's breaking the build. Yeah. And so now we know right away. Right um, away is the key. And right away, that or since the last CI. or maybe it takes an hour to build, right? Yeah. But you know, right away, we know that um, the, the integration doesn't work. Yeah, right? and something <coughs> changed in, since the last integration right. test. And then, by using good source control, then I can see well who made that change. Right. Oh, David made that change. Oh, I didn't fully appreciate that, right? I did misread the spec, or he misread the spec, or the spec is misleading or whatever. Yeah, or incomplete, <coughs> just didn't right. realize Right, we can this, solve the this, problem. This depends, this right. depends on that. And, <coughs> excuse me, you can set up a continuous integration in Azure DevOps or VSDS in 10 minutes. Now, the next thing, CD is continuous deployment, right? So we build this, the build works, and now we want to release it to testing Right, then to production, we automate that process. You know, oh, of course, I can go to Visual Studio and right click and publish, but why do I have to do that? I build, I, I build locally, I check in, and then the server handles all of that for me after we've done the build and after we've ensured that the software is right. You can do it gated, so we'll release to testing, and then when the test team signs off, then it can be released to production. See, right now, we would have the ability to, to dramatically improve our ability to release more often just by automating these things that run um, on a server somewhere, whether it's on-prems or in the cloud. Um, and then you can integrate unit testing and integration testing. You can do some monitoring, so we might want to know how often you know the, the service is up and running, whether it's a website or it's... Uh, some microservice sitting in, in a container somewhere. Okay. Um, and you can then also, as part of more advanced DevOps, is kind of control how you roll things out, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, if it's just a web app, um, you've had the ability to kind of do these things. I create a new version of a web page, and then mm -hmm. the next person that goes to the site gets the new version. Right. But there's also ways of kind of rolling it out to 5% or 10% of the population, make sure just to make sure they production. like it and that it works. Mm -hmm. And you can do this not only with web apps, but with services. You can do that with mobile apps as well. Uh -huh. So the whole thing about DevOps is to get you better at releasing more often at higher quality. So maybe that's why it was, um, it was done so infrequently in the past is because it was very painful. Yes. And maybe this tooling and these new processes right. that we're thinking of make it less painful. And it's it's really it's really easy to get started. Of course, like anything, to get really good at it takes a lot of time and practice right. and thought. But if you just want to get better, uh -huh. you can do that really quickly 
very will, will be the first step. Like there's, a, I know, I, I as a years of my consulting taught me that there are a lot of companies that aren't doing any DevOps. They're not right. writing unit tests. They may not even have source control. What's what would be a good step for these folks? The good first step would be um, continuous integration. Okay. Source control would be the, the best yeah. first okay. step. I mean, if you're not doing source control, then you really need to do that. Um, and then the next step is just continuous integration. Okay. So that when I when we check in code goes to a server, the server builds, the server pulls the code out of the repository, right, whether it's um, TFVC or Git, um, uh, you know, works. Uh, we work great with both. I check in my code, a server builds, um, and then lets me know if the build worked, Okay. right? Ideally, it also throw in some unit testing there, yep. and just do that, because now you're avoiding the situation of having to have your testers or even worse, learn in production that your code and my code don't work well together. Then the next thing you would do is start doing continuous deployment so that the manual process of getting this thing deployed <clears throat> um, is handled for you automatically. So I can work, you know, I gotta, I gotta leave because I gotta, I gotta get to the Mariners game at 6 o'clock, right? And I just finished my code. I check in. I'm done. I can go home. I don't have to stay to do the build. I don't have to stay to do the deployment. I don't have to do any of that ops stuff. <laughs> right? I have a server do it for me. Nice. And if that's all you did, you would become better. Is it 5% better? Is it 25% better? Whatever. Right? Yeah. Now you're better. And now you can incrementally and at your leisure, and when it makes sense, adopt more and more practices. Um, and then start working on releasing more often. Once you get your basic CI CD pipeline set up, play around with releasing more frequently smaller bits of code. Right? Hey, so and so found a bug. Let's fix that bug. Mm -hmm. That's all we're going to do today. I'm going to fix that bug and release. Hmm, oh my okay. God, cool. Yeah. Right Now I'm going to add a feature and a bug fix. Release. Cool. Now you've got your release cycle down from every three months to every three weeks or every week or whatever makes sense for the yeah. users. And, and all of a sudden... A set of tests can make sure that, or maybe not make 100% sure, but yeah. decrease the possibility that fixing that bug would break something else. Right. Which was a big reason why we couldn't do that in the past. Yes. Yes. And if you're doing smaller incremental things, uh -huh. right, even if you miss something, oh, okay, well, we'll fix that, right? Uh, Next day, a, you release a new version that fixes that bug. That sounds agile. It is agile. <laughs> exactly. It's agile. And now you're delivering more value to your users. And, you know, you get to the point where users say, all right, too many upgrades, too fast, too many, <laughs> which is a much better problem to deal with than not enough and too slow. That's true. So it's and all now, about getting agile. And now somebody has been at the, what the major software breakthrough is, update on exit. So instead of saying, there's a new version of software, you have to install it before you, <laughs> that before you use this software. That's interesting, and now because when I exit, on. I want to be done. I oh, want to no. turn my computer off, Oh, some of, these, some of these updates, like my Adobe products, <laughs> yeah. take a long time to update. Well, uh, Visual <laughs> Studio's like that yeah. now, right? Um, you go in and it tells you, oh, you've got updates to extensions. Okay. And you download them, and it won't install them until you exit Visual Studio. Okay. Which is nice. I just want the option, I guess. Because <laughs> if I'm not using that extension, I don't have to exit Visual Studio. But what I find myself doing <laughs> is I download them, and then I exit Visual Studio so they'll install, oh, I see. and then right. halfway so through, I'm like, maybe having the option why did I what do I that? Want. It's just a question. Do I want to install <laughs> yes. it now? Do I want to wait uh, till I exit? Do I want to just defer it to some right. indeterminate time in the future? Yeah. That, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I want to choose when that disruption occurs. Exactly. Right. And that's just my rant. I've, <laughs> I've been experiencing that. No, I agree with that. And that's, that's the kind of thing that you would you know, work with uh, your end customers on to the extent you can. You might even do A-B testing, right? Take Good point. The third floor, you got to install the updates on the way in, and the fourth floor, you install the updates on the way out, and then we'll see who's yelling the loudest. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, the, uh, uh, everything, the nice thing is everything you talked about is capable within uh, Azure DevOps, formerly yes. known as VSTS. Right. I mean, you could choose to use some other tools to do that, but if yep. you have... Azure DevOps. And there are great tutorials on the doc site. I love saying this, right? The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the that documentation the docs is good. are great. Oh, they've gotten a lot better. They in the are last so good. The, the Azure DevOps 
the product formerly known as Visual Studio Team <laughs> Services, as I like to call it. The docs are really, really good, and they have great walkthroughs that will walk you through the process of creating, uh, getting Git up and running, CI, CD, and again, if that's all you do, you are now way more agile, way better at delivering software sooner, and that's, that's just a good thing to do. So even if you just take baby steps down the path, you get what is probably immediate um, measurable improvement in your processes, and then you can decide, you know, do I just want to stick around at the level 200 DevOps? Do I want to get better at it? Do I really want to get good at it? How long do I want to take? It's your call. All right, this is good. This is some good information. We've given people something to think about. We even gave you some homework to read those documentation. <laughs> That's right. It's a good place to stop, I think. I, do you have uh, you have your TV show? Where do I find that? Uh, Channel Nine. Uh, Channel Nine. MS, MSDN Channel Nine. Com. We'll put a I link think. to it. Oh right my here. God, I don't know. We'll put a just link to search, it. Just uh, <laughs> Just do a search for Channel Nine okay. or search for Visual Studio Toolbox. Visual Studio Toolbox is the name of the show. And do you have yeah. is that do you have a blog or any other online presence or a Twitter? I handle? do have a blog, but what I, to be perfectly honest, what I mostly do with the blog is talk about the latest episode that I release. So I'm Fair not enough. at the moment doing all that much with my blog, sadly. Right. I do have a Twitter account, R O Green underscore M S. Um, so yeah. Great. Robert, thank you so much. All right, thanks, David. Thanks to the wonders of modern technology, I can say to all of my friends across the planet, go Red Sox.